Hi, I'm Troy and you're watching TroyTube. And in this video, we're going to take a quick look at recommended computer specifications for design space. So uh, a lot of different systems are out there. And uh, when it comes to the computers, you have two choices for design space. And that is the Mac or Windows PC. With Macs, if you're buying a new Mac, you're generally going to get a good fast system. They regulate the hardware in Mac computers very tightly. And they are the only ones that make them. So if you go to the Mac store, Apple store, and you buy a new Mac, you're going to probably get a really good machine and things are going to be fine. So the specifications on Cricut's website for Mac should be okay. And all the way back, you know, probably as much as five or six years on Macs. Now, when you get older than that, you start getting into some slower hardware that may give you some issues upgrading the uh, operating system. Now with uh, Windows PCs, it's a little bit different because it's not a tightly regulated industry on hardware specifications. So I want to try to give you some tips on what not to look for and what to look for when it comes to a Windows PC. Now some people have luck with some of the inexpensive units out there like the HP Stream, the um, regular Microsoft Surface tablets that have the Atom processor in them and things like that. But there are a lot of variables in those things. And I'm not going to say those won't work like the little $200 laptops from Walmart or other places. But uh, you're going to be very prone to things like shockwave errors depending on the projects you do. So if you do very basic cuts like somebody's name or just a basic object, you probably will be okay. But if you start getting into more complex projects, more layers, lots of imported images, lots of print and cuts, things like that, you are going to be very prone to have issues with some of those uh, lower end systems. So what you want to watch out for are E1, E2, Celeron, and Atom processors. These are a no. So watch out for those. Those are typically very low power, slow processors, and uh, they're made for low power consumption and lesser expensive systems. And low power consumption comes at the price of low processing power and of course that's what drives the price down on some of those units. Now some of these units you'll find might have a an SSD hard drive, a solid state hard drive, which will make up for some of that, but I still can't really recommend them based on the specifications and the performance levels. Now what you want to look for when it comes to a processor is in the end there's two primary manufacturers of processors you'll find in Windows PCs. So Intel i3 i5 or i7 processors are all going to be great for design space. Even i3 and i5 processors, my laptop is six years old, so it's a first or second generation i5, um, and it is still you know very high performance and, and works very well with design space. Still a much faster processor than any of these. To give you an example, most of the E1 or E2 processors that I look up on a benchmark score will be less than uh, somewhere around 25 to 30 percent slower than my six-year-old i5 processor. So you want to look for those. Now the other manufacturer is AMD and you'll see a variety of AMD processors out there and you typically want to look for A6, A8, or A10 processors. And so that's kind of the uh, AMD equivalent of the Intel i series processors and they're generally going to be pretty good performance and everything and so these are a yes so anything below that line you should be looking for when it comes to a processor in your PC now the other thing you want to look for is the well, let me back up for a second and mention the Cricut requirements on their website for a Windows PC um, they have a processor specification that says Pentium 4 2.33 gigahertz processor or higher. And I want to clear up uh, some confusion about that. This is a very poor specification in my opinion. I wish Cricut would change this and come up with a better specification for the processor because this processor is about 15, 13 to 15 years old and you know, when it comes to a benchmark score, I have a website I go to to look at the scores. And earlier I mentioned that that E1 processor is about 30% slower than my six-year-old i5 processor. 
this processor is about 30% as fast as this one. So um, this P4 2.33 gigahertz processor they specify on the Cricut website, you can't go by that. It probably wouldn't even boot up Windows 7, and I don't even think you can install Windows 8 and Windows 10 because of a hardware requirement in the processor. So um, you cannot go by this. Now a lot of people get confused by this 2.33 gigahertz pro, uh, speed, and you cannot follow that either because of the way processors are made. A 1.8 gigahertz processor in an i3 processor will be much faster than this Pentium 4 2.33 gigahertz. So you really cannot go by that specification at all. Now the last or the next specification Cricut says you should have at least four gigabytes of RAM. Now RAM is your memory. It's the working memory when your computer is up and running. It's what's you know running in the in the background, the operating system applications you've got loaded, all those things. So um, four gigabyte is a minimum I would recommend. And in most cases, I highly recommend eight gigabytes or more. I have eight gigabytes in both of my systems. Everything runs great, and I'm you know pretty pretty strong power user. So I do a lot of video processing, obviously, and and things like that. So highly recommend eight gigabytes or more. But four gigabyte will get you there. The last specification I like to tell people to look for if they can find something in their budget is a solid state hard drive or an SSD. Now you'll usually see them listed as SSD or HDD. An HDD is a traditional hard drive. It spins, it's mechanical, and it's slower than an SSD because the SSD is like a big block of memory and it's super fast compared to a regular hard drive. So if you can find one in your budget, get an SSD. Now price-wise you'll find uh, SSD hard drives are much more expensive for comparable space. But what you have to remember is most people do not need a very large hard drive unless you have tons of music, tons of video. My laptop has a 256 gigabyte SSD hard drive in it and you know I don't really you know store that much data on the hard drive. My workstation at my house however has a 2 terabyte hard drive because that's also where I store all my data. Um, you know, I have probably well over a gigabyte of just data and applications and things like that that I have to have storage to and access to and things like that. So um, if you can find one, get an SSD, if you can find one in your budget. If not, uh, one thing to watch for, if you look at the specifications on laptops, a lot of times when you look at laptops on the web, there'll be a tab that says specifications, or if you look around, maybe detailed specs or something like that, it will give you the details on the hard drive. Sometimes they'll give you the speed of the hard drive, and if it has a regular hard drive in it, it will usually say 5400 RPM or 7200 RPM. You generally want to go for the ones, the 7200 RPM, if you can, because it's going to be much faster and much more responsive. So uh, I don't recommend this if you have to go to a regular spinning disk hard drive. If you can get it, get one at 7200 RPM. It will make quite a big difference. And then, of course, the SSD is a lightning fast drive. So hopefully that's been helpful to you. I just want to try to clear up some of the things a lot of people are asking repeatedly about uh, Windows PC hardware specs. And uh, hopefully that will... Uh, help you find what you're looking for. A lot of people say that they're looking for something on a budget. So what I tell people is if you're looking for a you know, $200, $250 laptop, you might want to look at some of the refurbished or off-lease units. So Tiger Direct, Staples, the Dell Outlet, they all have refurbished or open box units that are you know almost in new condition, a lot of them. Uh, are used or they're off lease, they bring them in, they check them out, make sure they're running to manufacturer specs, and they sell them dirt cheap. So a lot of times you can get something like an i5 or an i3 processor for just a couple of hundred bucks, and a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to use computer or whatever, but in reality, if you buy a new computer, in six months you're going to have a used computer. And if you buy a new $200 real crappy laptop, in six months you're going to have a used crappy laptop. So uh, you know, think, that, think think about those things, and and you know, if you do go that route, you know, buy for someone reputable, and uh, someone has a lot of reviews, someone you know like the Dell Outlet or Staples or something like that, and you know, you're going to have a lot better luck with those. So again, hopefully that's been helpful to you, and appreciate you watching.
If my video has been helpful to you, please subscribe to my channel. And after you subscribe, be sure to click the little gear and check this box so that you'll receive an email notification when I upload a new video. You can also help support my channel by making a small donation on patreon.com slash Troy Young.